Alléluia. 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 We want to thank the Lord for this privilege of fellowship together. We are deeply grateful to find ourselves in your midst. We are so much excited and we are deeply grateful to God who gave us the privilege to fellowship with you together. We want to welcome every one of you that the Lord has drawn to this gathering. We respect your coming and we appreciate God for your coming. We recognize that several of you are the leaders of the Church of God in Rwanda. We recognize that God has used several of you to bring this nation to where we are today spiritually. We recognize what God has used several of you to do in the land. We also recognize that several of you are crying to God for revival. We have related with few of you and we could see the cry of your heart. And we know God will answer your prayer. God will visit you. And God will visit your, this land. So we greet you and we appreciate you. We are grateful to God who has given you the privilege to be with us. When you enter a place, you don't behave as if people have not been working for God in that place. When you get to a land, you seek to know those God have used in the land. So we cannot come here and behave as if nobody has been working here. We recognize the work God has used you to do in the land. And we deeply appreciate all of you for this. We are coming to identify with you. We are here to identify with you. And to labor together. By the grace of God. I want to welcome all of you into this meeting. In the name of Jesus Christ. I also want to welcome several of our disciples God has sent here from other countries. Some of our brethren came into this meeting from Kenya. Can you wave your hands if you are from Kenya? Our our welcome. Our welcome. The Lord bless your coming. We pray that you have come from a far land like those Greeks. You will only come to see Jesus. May you see Jesus. We have some brethren that came to us from Uganda. Are they around from Uganda? Oh, you are welcome. You are welcome. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. You are welcome to this gathering. I think we have some persons that came to us from Burundi. Oh, hallelujah, brother. Thank you. 
You are welcome. You are welcome. To go may you not go may you not go back to Burundi empty handed. In, in Jesus' name. We have some brethren from other nations we'd like to identify briefly. We have one of the disciples from Canada is here. He is from Canada. Canada he's gone. Oh, oh he's here. Thank you. You are welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We are expecting a brother from South Africa. He had a little challenge with his flight yesterday. But he's already airborne now, coming to Kigali. Uh, when he comes, we'd like you to meet with him. And any other country, let me not forget my friend Edward from Hong Kong. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Do we forget any other person coming to us outside of Rwanda? All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yeah. All right. I'd like to uh, welcome our brethren that came to us from Nigeria, the okay. Living Seed team. Can you see our brethren, Living Seed team? Can you stand on your feet? Please? The Living Seed team, Nigeria. Thank you. Living Seed. You are welcome. Uh, Several of them, these are the brethren we've been working together in the Living Seed team. We want to say you are all welcome. And, uh, for us, the Rwandese, we welcome all the foreigners. All that are coming from outside. We welcome you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Thank you for giving us your audience. Just a word about living seed. Uh, living seed is a Christian organization uh, that is based in Nigeria with the basic burden and trust for discipleship and leadership development. It's a Christian organization that draws people from different church groups, church denominations. We are not a church denomination. But we belong to church denominations. Let me give an example of what I'm saying. Brother John, can you identify your local church? Going back to Baptist church in Lagos. He's a Baptist. Yes, sir. Chapel of Redemption. Abuja, Nigeria. Yes, sir. Evangelical Church of Christ, Muri Nigeria. Yes, we have our brethren. Yes, sir. Methodist Church, no Nigeria. Methodist, Muri Nigeria. All right. Mm. Our brother Sunday is there. Yes. Okay. Muri no Muri Christian Center, Muri Nigeria. Yes, brother Charles. Muri no Muri Pentecost. Pentecost Church. Now I, I want to show you that. We are not about church denominations. We are members of different church denominations. We came together for one purpose. Revival of the body of Christ. That is the driving force. So when we get to a, a place, a locality, 
we identify with the body of Christ. Dushaka kwifatanya n'abantu bose bari mu mubiri wa Kristo. Wherever people worship God, aho abantu bose baramye Imana mukuri, and they worship the living God, bakaramya Imana nzima, we identify with them. Abo twifatanya nabo. And we have one cry, one burden, one desire in our hearts. Dufite ikifuzo kimwe mu mutima wacu. Is that the church of God we experience revival. No kugira ngo itorero ry'Imana rigire ubyutse. And the Lord gave us two critical strategies to pursue revival. Imana rero yaduhaye uburyo bubiri bwo kuzana ubyutse. First is discipleship. Icyambere no kwigisha abantu kuba bigishwa. You cannot be a meaningful Christian if you are not a disciple of Jesus. Ntabwo wa mu Kristo ufite akamaro utarabo mwigishwa wa Kristo. So God began to introduce our hearts to the need for discipleship. Imana rero yaje kutwerekaka ko hari ikifuzo cyo kugira abantu kubahindura bigishwa. Discipleship not as a two year course to get a certificate. Uh, izo nyigisho dutanga ntabwo ari za zindi z'imyaka ibiri kugira ngo ubone diplome discipleship that is the training of life to become like Jesus ahubwo anyigisho dutanga ni za zindi zihindura ubuzima bwawe ugasoka ufite ishusho ya Kristo that is the cry of our hearts uko niko kurira kuri mu mitima yacu the second critical burden ubundi buryo imana yaduhaye and the strategy of pursuing revival in the body of Christ is leadership development in every organization leadership is very critical where the leadership has failed every good intention and dream we fail nibu muyobozi atari mwiza ni yerekwa n'inzoza afite ntabwo zishobora kugerwaho we are leadership is focused aho umuyobozi agira intumbero every expectation will be pursued and accomplished ibyo yakwifuza byose yabigeraho this is what we do ibyo rero nibyo dukora this is what we bring to you ibyo nibyo tubazaniye we are not here to start a church. That is not what God is asking us to do. We are in your midst. As we complement the efforts of laboring in the body of Christ. Whatever little we can add to your spiritual growth. So that you will all make heaven kugira ngo natwe twese tugere ku iherezo ryiza even as it is our desire to make heaven nkuko natwe dufite ikifuzo cyo kuzagera mu ijuru that is the dream of our lives izo nizo nzo zidufite mu buzima bwacu that is the reason why you are, we are in your midst niyo mpamvu twaje na hano tukabasanga so we want to let you know that early turashaka kugira ngo ibyo tubibabwire kare as we fellowship together turimo guterana muri aya materaniro Amen. Amen. You will get to know us more and more. Muzakomeza kugenda mutumenya. You are free to interact with any of us. Uhawe kaze ni tunasoza amateraniro gusuhuza. Ask questions. Bene data ukababaza nibibazo as much as possible. Uko byashoboka kose. If that we give you clarity. Kugira ngo ushobore gusobanukirwa neza. Now if you look at the program outline the name of the speaker of this meeting is in you will notice is brother Bile Akoni wagomba kuyobora yitwa Bile Akani who is unavoidably regretfully absent in our midst this morning. Wongu aho tuvugira hano afite agahinda kenshi kuba atari hano. Brother Billy Akoni is the coordinator of the Living Seed team. Ah mwene data Billy akaba ari wo coordinator cyangwa se umuyobozi wa Living Seed. He had prepared so much to be part of this meeting. Yari yateguye byinshi agomba kutuzanira muri aya materaniro. 
yatangiye kwitegura kuza muri iki gihugu guhera umwaka ushize I don't know if I should say unfortunately. Sinzi niba nababwira ko kubwa mahirwe mabi. But God knows. Ariko Imani irabizi. On the thought of this month. Ah, uh, utaricha shatu zuko kwezi. We were in Abuja together. Twari kumwe hamwe mu muji wa Abuja to seek a visa to Romania. Dushaka visa yo kujya mu gihugu cyo muri Romania. In three weeks time he has a ministration in Romania. Kuko mu byumweru bitatu biri imbere agomba kuzajya mu gihugu cyo muri Romania. He went through the visa interview process. Ajya muri ambassade kugira ngo bazwe ibibazo byo kugira ngo abone visa and everything was all right. Ibintu byose ubona bigenda neza. He was to collect his passport from the embassy last week Friday. Yagomba kujya kwakira passeport ye icyumweru gishize. And the embassy failed to bring the passport. Ariko ambasade asanga passport ye barayitwaye mu gihugu cyo muri Romania itari muri Nigeria. Several efforts were made. Dukoriyo bwabaga turagerageza for him to get the passport. Kugira ngo abone passport it failed. Biranga he requested that they should return the passport without the visa. No, no, I get on now. You say, I've got no, 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 no mu gihugu cyo muri Romania they will stamp it in their country hanyuma bagakubitamo a visa mu gihugu cyawo before they will return it back mbere yuko bagarura passport yawo so even to withdraw the passport without visa is impossible no kugira ngo akure yo passport idafite visa nabyo ni ibintu bidashoboka the passport is still in Romania passport iracyari muri Romania is still waiting aracyategereje called me last night and said I should apologize to all of you. Yampamagaye ninjoro arambira ati nyaboneka unsabira imbabazi abatumirwa that he is not taking your presence for granted. Ko mu byukuri ngo haya gaciro kwitabira kwanyu no kuza kwanyu. Yes, prepare this mind to be here and be part of this fellowship. Yateguye kumara igihe kirekire kugira ngo aze abane namwe but whichever way it happened that it will become like this kugira ngo rero ibingi biba biba byabaye is what we cannot explain ntabwo dushobora gutanga ubusobanuro buhagije he's been monitoring this meeting mu byukuri yumva gagomba kubana natwe he has been calling frequently to find out how things are going here yewe no mu byiteguro yahoraga ahamagara mbaza tubigeze he umuteguro ugeze he this morning he tried to reach to us again. No muri iki gitondo yongeye kuduhamagara. His heart has been here. Umutima we nubwo ari muri Nigeria ariko umutima uri hano. We want to bring his apology to all of you. Turashaka rero kubasaba imbabazi mwese. And I pray that you will accept it as what God has done. Ndabasaba kugira ngo mubyakire nkuko biri uko Imana yabyemeye. Amen. Amen. Nevertheless, he said, I should let you know. At every slightest opportunity, God will release him. He would like to be here. So, that's why I'm standing here this morning. I ought not to be standing here in this capacity. Ntabwo nakaba yenda mpagaze hano I don't know why God allow it Ariko sinzi impamvu Imana yabyemeye So I would like to make an appeal Ndashaka kubabwira ngo When you are wearing a shoe that is bigger than your legs Iyo wambaye urukweto runini ruruta ikirenge cyawe You don't walk fast Ntabwo wihuta You may even fall down Hari giye wanagwa hasi This morning I'm standing before you Muri iki gitondo mpagaze imbere yanyu we are in a shoe that is bigger than me namba urukweto runini ruruta ikirenge cyanjye 
So if I fall down, please understand that my shoe is not a normal size. Is that okay? Alright. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. May I invite you to stand on your feet with me together? We will pray with a song. Sometimes we sing song as a prayer. In your program booklet, a hymn number two. Jesus, my Lord, to thee I cry. Unless thou help me, I must die. Oh, bring thy free salvation nigh and take me as I am and take me as I am take me as I am my only plea Christ died for me oh take me as I am Amen we are going to sing that song together the organist will guide us. And, uh, Sing it as a personal prayer to God. Sing it reflecting on it. Jesus, my Lord, to thee. Is that the tune we know? Want to go. Jesus, my Lord. Unless thou help me, I must bring thy free salvation. O take me as I am, and take me as I am, and take me as I am. My only plea, Christ, for me, and take me as I am. Helpless I am and fool, yet for me that was and thou canst make.
Our Father, we say thank you for today. Thank you for making today a reality. Thank you for ushering us into this sanctuary. Gathering us from different places. That you will speak with our lives. Thank you for your servants that has come from different places. Lord, we pray you will bless their coming. Our gathering this week will not be vain. We will not gather as a routine we shall be refreshed we shall be revived your presence will encounter our lives we are looking up to you Lord that this day having brought us together to sit at your feet we will experience you anew we will experience you in a different way our hearts look up to you with expectation that you will help our lives you will increase our lives each of us there shall be an addition to our lives something will happen to our spiritual life by your grace by your molding hand by your work of mercy thank you Holy Spirit we desire one thing this morning that we will see Jesus we will hear Jesus we will recognize Jesus and to him alone be glory. We pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Shall we be seated? Our time is far gone. We will briefly introduce ourselves to the subject of our gathering. The focus of this meeting is the making of a spiritual leader. The making of a spiritual leader. Because of time, we will take a brief introduction into that subject. We go and have our lunch. Then we come back to start looking at that issue much more deeply. But for the purpose of introduction, let's turn our Bibles to the book of Acts chapter 7. Acts of Apostles chapter 7. I read from verse 21 and we may stop at verse 28. Verse 21. And when he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him. Oh no, let me start from verse 20. In which time Moses was born, and was exceeding fair and nourished up in his father's house three months. And when he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him up and nourished him for her own son. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptian and was mighty in words and in deeds. And when he was full forty years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him and avenged him that he was oppressed and smote the Egyptian. For he supposed his brethren would have understood how that God, by his end, would deliver them, but they understood not. 
And the next day he showed himself unto them as they strove, and would have set them at one again, saying, Sir, ye are brethren, why do ye wrong one to another? But he that did his neighbor wrong thrust him away and saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge over us? Without killing as you did kill the Egyptian yesterday. Thank you. Thank you. Hanyuma ameze uh, amaze gutabwa umukobwa wa farao aramujyana amurera nk'umwana we Mose yigishwa ubwenge bwose bw'abanyegiputa agira imbaraga mu magambo ye no mu byakora Ariko amaze imyaka 40 avutse yigira inama mu mutima we kugenderera bene wabo ari bo bana ba Israel Abonye umuntu urengana aramutabara ahorera urengana akubita umunyegiputa yibwira yuko bene wabo bamenye ko imana ibakirisha ukuboko kwe ariko ntibabimenye bukeye bwaho asanga barwana agerageza kubakiranura ati yemwe bagabo ko muri abavandimwe ni iki gitumye mugirirana nabi ariko warenganyaga mugenzi we aramusunika aramubaza ati ninde wakugize umutware cyangwa umucamanza wacu mbese urashaka kunyica nkuko ejo wishe umunyegiputa amen amen the making of a spiritual leader guhindurwa umuyobozi mwiza mu buryo bwo mu leadership is a very critical aspect of every society Uyobozi ni ikintu cy'ingenzi mu muryango. Leadership is very very important and cannot for any reason be overlooked. Uyobozi ni ikintu cy'ingenzi kubera iyo mpamvu ni ikintu umuntu atagomba kwirengagiza. In every society, mu muryango wose what gives it structure? Igituma umuryango ugira gahunda ukagira imikorere myiza what gives it its formation ese niki gituma umuryango ugaragara neza is the leadership iki bikora nta kindi no kugira ubuyobozi bwiza in every organization buri muryango wose what makes it relevant igituma uwo muryango uvamo imbuto nziza what makes it fruitful igituma uwo muryango ushobora kugirira abantu akamaro and what makes it fulfill igituma uwo muryango ushobora gusohoza intego what makes a organization to meet up with set goals igituma uwo muryango ushobora kushyiraho intego is the leadership nubuyobozi bwiza in the church mwitorero god respect leadership imana yubaha ubuyobozi god gives honor to leadership imana yu ihicyubahiro ubuyobozi in the kingdom of god mu bwami bw'imana god does not take leadership for granted habwe imana ijya ifata ubuyobozi nk'ikintu cyoroheje when you are a leader iyo uri umuyobozi in the house of god mu nzu y'imana god releases honor on your life imani kumanuraho cyangwa se igushiraho icyubahiro we you are a leader iyo urumuyobozi god place respect on your life icyubahiro cy'imana kikuzaho god is envious of leadership imana ija isa nkaho ifuhira ubuyobozi his is critical about leadership ni ifata ubuyobozi nk'ikintu kingenzi he don't joke with leadership habwo ijya ibifata nk'ibintu by'imikino that's why several of us sit here niyo mpavu benshi baje aha uyu munsi anywhere you appear aho uhagaze hose and you say you are a clergy ukitwa kuri umuyobozi people bow before you aho cha hose abantu barunama they respect you kuko barakubaha what is the reason impamvu ni hihe God Iman has decided yahisemo to honor kukubahish leadership no kubaha ubuyobozi bwawe God has honored leadership Iman ayubashi ubuyobozi everywhere a spiritual leader is found ahantu wose hagaragaye umuyobozi mu buryo bwo mu mwuka 
even if you are not doing well nubwo wabukora amafuti you carry the honor ukomeza kugira icyo cyubahiro amen amen so leadership is not to be taken for granted uyo wazi rero ntabwo ari ikintu cyo gukinisha is a critical key nuru fungu zo rukome to that brings increase to the purpose of god kugira ngo umugambi w'Imana ushobore gusohora that's why god respect leaders niyo mpamvu Imana yubaha abayobozi he will invest so much in leaders Imana ishira imbaraga cyane mu bayobozi leaders who are spiritual abayobozi bo mu mwuka god don't take them for granted Imana ntabwo ijya ipfa kubirengagiza god Imana because of the respect kubera icyubahiro and the honor no kubaha he has on leaders imana ishira kubayobozi he has decided imana yahisemo that we spiritual leaders twebwe abitwa ko turi abayobozi b'umwuka we are responsible nitwe tubazwa in registering people in the kingdom of god kugira ngo ari twe dufite ishingano gufata abantu tukabashira mu bwami bw'imana hallelujah hallelujah God has released that into our hands. Ivyo Imana yabidushize mu biganze so that kugira ngo we enlist men and women ngo twinjize abagabo n'abagore into his kingdom. Mu bwami bwe. It's a critical matter. Dero iki ni ikintu cy'ingenzi. Let me say. Reka mvuge ngo if so many people face to be in the kingdom of God. Abantu nibananirwa kugera mu ijuru we are responsible. Bizatubazwa It is our duty nishingano zacu when God lift up a leader Imani izamu uyu muyobozi gives you power iguha imbaraga gives you grace ikaguha ubuntu gives you anointing ikaguha mafuta gives you what it takes to serve ikaguha ibikoresho byose ukene kugira ngo ukore it gives you what it takes to train people for the kingdom ikaguha n'ubushobozi bwo gutoza abantu ubategurira ubwami bw'Imana if people miss heaven abantu ni batagera mu ijuru spiritual leaders are responsible abayobozi bo mu mwuka nibo bazabibazwa what god has given each of you here Impamvu impamvu imana yagiye guha ubuyobozi as a spiritual leader n'umuyobozi wo mu mwuka is far and above the ministry and operation of the devil biri hejuru y'imbaraga z'abadaimoni n'abategetsi bo mu kirere bo mu mwijima what god has put in you ibyo imana yagushize the devil cannot come near satani nabwo ishobora kubitsinda so you cannot say the devil hinder people from going to heaven ntabwo uzavuga ngo ngo satani yambujije kujya mu ijuru he has given you power imana yaguhaye imbaraga he has given you authority yaguhaye ubutware he has given you what it takes yaguhaye ibishoboka byose to deliver men from the hands of the devil kugira ngo ukure abantu mu maboko ya satani i say it again ndabisubiramo If men face to go to heaven abantu ni batagera mu ijuru we are responsible nitwe bizabazwa whatever it takes to prepare men for heaven icyo byasaba cyose kugira ngo dutware abantu mu ijuru is in the hands of spirituals imana yarakiguhaye I want you to know the gravity of your calling. Ndashaka kugira ngo umenye uburemere bw'umuhamagaro wawe. I want you to know that God is serious about calling us. Ndashaka kugira ngo umenye uburemere Imana ihaye ubuzima bwawe igihe yaguhamagaraga. We cannot take our calling to serve God for granted. Ntabwo twafata umuhamagaro wacu ngo tutware nk'ikintu cyoroheje. We cannot joke with it. Hanubwo ari ibintu byo gukinisha because kuko the destiny of several men kuko iherezo ry'abantu benshi kwisi is tied to your life. Biri mu biganza byawe. If you don't understand the reason God called you, no the soul of the impact of man yaguhamagaye, you will be playing around with people. Uzaje uzaje wibera mu mikino gusa. You will take your ministry for granted. Uzumva ko ari nkakazi gasanzwe. You will use anointing to do small 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 things. Uzaje ukoresha nayo mavuta kwikorera utuntu twatworoheje. It ought not to be so. Ariko ntabwo ariko bigomba kumera. For God 
to release authority of leadership into a man's hands he will first make you he will first take time to you. God does not send a man without adequate equipping of that man. Before God will send you, before God will commission you for anything, it takes time to nourish you, to equip you, to furnish you, to prepare you, to make you. Unfortunately, in the church of God today, the making process of leaders is despised. The making process of leaders is not taken serious. In secular life, that can never be taken for granted. In every profession, before a man is commissioned in that profession, he is made. He is prepared. He is equipped. Is there any profession in this country that you have experts and they were not first prepared? They were not made. Do we have a medical doctor in this congregation? Is there anything like that? By chance? A medical doctor. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank rakoze, you, sir. Rakoze. Please, can I trouble an elder? We know permission to trouble you, sir. We know who she hogat. Sorry to disturb you, hmm? please. We want to understand. <laughs> we have the <laughs> now, you are a medical doctor. Rumugang. Now, tell us how <laughs> did it happen that <laughs> you became <laughs> a te. medical doctor? <laughs> Did you wake up and desire? You want to be a medical doctor. Then you went to the hospital and you started practicing medicine. So tell us how did it happen? Explain anyhow, anywhere you understand. Uh, Nize imyakirindwi muri kaminuza niga ubuganga niga ubuganga hanyuma imyaka ibiri ya nyuma habaye gukora mu bitaro cyane stage nyine yo kudutegura kugira ngo tuza tuzabashe gukora kuvura abanyarwanda murakoze thank you don't go sir Sorry. you say you studied 7 years ngo amaze imyaka irindwi muri kaminuza what were you doing those 7 years muri iyo myaka irindwi wakora dikis were you eating and just drinking sleep wiriraga umuceri nibirayi gusa cyangwa hari nibindi wakora were you doing 7 years muri iyo myaka irindwi wakora dikis muri kaminuza 7 years for what muri iyo myaka irindwi yari yiki imyaka irindwi harimo byinshi habanje kwiga ubumenyi ubumenyi rusange mbere yo hanyuma Jamaat ini nyak kiri, mungkin menyerusan je, hanya tu tanya lagu korang mubi taro, ada ko tu tu niaga, ada ko nyak kaya ni mana, cahne cahne, hawa ini ni punya korang ku mubi taro tu di dusus mawar gua itu kui gak kuat pun. Thank you sir, thank you sir, the Lord bless you. Mana kamu jis? You can sit down. Ushara kui chen. Do you hear what our brother said? Ngamu fikir dia tu bagi. He said first. Ngombere. He did general studies. Science, 
related issues. Human science, human books, general issues. Then they started doing specific things. Learning specific organs of the body. And when he finished, he started doing practice. Are you following that? Could our brother decide that he wants to be a medical doctor? And he just wake up one day and enter a hospital without general knowledge, without learning body parts, without practicals, and then he will become a medical doctor. Is that how it happens? Every profession is critical about the making. How people are made. If a man walk into a hospital and he was not first made a doctor, you know he will be killing people. Listen, 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 listen. <laughs> The topic of our discussion this morning. <laughs> the unmade preacher. What? The unmade. Eh, we must fit a minister. A minister that is not made. It is only the church that does not take the making process serious. It is only in spiritual matters that people are careless about their making. It is only in the body of Christ that a man will sleep and wake up and he will go and buy suits. He will wear and he will go and say, God, call me. God called me. And he will give himself a name. He said, I'm Reverend Doctor. I'm Apostle. Then he will start carrying Bible around. There's no other profession that such a thing is done. Even the people that repair your car. How did they get there? How did they start repairing car? They went for a making process. They went for a training. They went and sat down. They learn the mechanics of a car. They learn the working principle of a car. They discover what is necessary about a car to move. And then they can now sit down in a workshop. When your car has problems, you have confidence to carry your car and meet a man in a workshop and he will repair your car. Pastors, Pastor, when people have problems and come to meet an unmade pastor, you damage him the more. You damage that man. <laughs> people have problems that need repair. The lives of men must be repaired. The devil has damaged people. The devil has killed a lot of people, wasted people. But God has hope in the pastor. pastor. That when a man is battered, when the soul of a man is damaged, and you come to meet a pastor, there should be restoration. The 
this morning. I want you to check. As God will help you to discover the place of your personal making. We are going to see in the Bible the danger of being a pastor that is not made. The passage we read, I know you are very familiar with it. We are talking about Moses whom you know well. And you know the history of his birth. So I will not go that much. But when Moses was born, the Bible said he was nourished in his father's house. But unfortunately, only for three months. He was nourished. He was fed. He was equipped. He was prepared. But only three months. The decree of the king came that all male children should die. The mother got wisdom put Moses in a basket and dab it with pitch and casted it on river Nile. So the Bible said in verse 21, when he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him up and did what? And nourish him. And nourish him. Pharaoh's daughter. Brothers and sisters, may I tell you something today? Even the devil, the devil, you know the devil. Satan You should be familiar with the devil. <laughs> Even the devil. Satan. When he wants to use somebody, he first prepared that person. <laughs> Even the devil. Satan. Listen. Umva. The devil don't just use people. Satan He prepared them first. He teach them how to be dangerous. He teach them how to be wicked. He prepared them how to frustrate the purpose of God in the lives of men. Even the devil. Satan usually prepare men before you use them. How do you want God to use you? Without adequate preparation. Without sufficient making. Without the equipping of your own life. Look at Pharaoh's daughter. I used to think that girl was compassionate. I used to think she was only being merciful on the little boy that was drowning in the river. I used to think that girl she stumbled on Moses in the river by chance. So she, she had compassion on Moses. And she just picked Moses. I didn't know. She had an agenda. That girl is not an ordinary girl. She had an agenda. When she picked that boy, look at the testimony of the Bible. The word of God said, and Pharaoh's daughter took him up and nourished him for her own for her own for her use for her purpose Pharaoh's daughter did not train Moses to be useful to God 
She trained Moses Mose to damage the purpose of God in Moses. Okay, that is it. You got it. That is it. It was not for God. She was not just fearing a life. She trained Moses for her own. The Bible says for her own. What is her own? Her ministry. Her purpose in life. What was her purpose in life? To sustain the kingdom of her father. To bring credibility to the kingdom of her father. What was the kingdom of her father? The throne of Egypt. Her father was the Pharaoh. So when the Bible said, Pharaoh's daughter took him up and nourish him and train him and fed him and made him for her own. What do I want you to learn here? You cannot escape making process and be useful to God. Because even the devil to use any man in his kingdom he will make that man Satan he will invest in that man he will train that man he will equip that man that lady she had foresight that lady she had understanding that lady was kingdom minded so many of us are not kingdom minded you are not bothered about what bother God you are not looking for what do I do to add to the kingdom of God we take the work of God casually you walk to church casually you attend to people's life casually I saw a lady with a vision a single lady who is not crying for husbands She's looking for how to be fruitful in my father's kingdom. What bothered that girl? A single girl was not who to marry. Several of our single ladies in church. If you ask them the only prayer topic of their heart, I need a husband to marry. So God give me a husband to marry. I saw a lady with a different vision. Her vision. The burden of her heart was the kingdom of her father. What is the burden of your heart? Ordained pastor. Are you bothered about the damage going on in the kingdom of God? Are you worried about the havoc the devil is doing to the kingdom of God? That lady had a different focus. When I encounter that lady in the scripture, my thinking changed. See, how can this small girl, single girl, be thinking about her father's kingdom? And me, I am careless about my father's kingdom. I'm not worried about it. Look at what that lady did, verse 22. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptian. What does that mean? Who trained him? 
in the wisdom of Egyptian. That girl. Pharaoh's daughter. Who do you think took Moses to school? Pharaoh's daughter. Who paid the school fees? Pharaoh's daughter. Who was involved in supervising the learning of Moses? Pharaoh's daughter. For what reason is she doing this? To preserve a man for her father's kingdom. She did everything she can. She made a sacrifice of her income. She used the resources of her father. And she invested in the making in the making of Moses. So that Moses will be made not for God for her own her own interest her own desire her own pursuit not for God. But she spent much that Moses will be made. So Moses became mighty in the wisdom of Egyptian. Moses became an orator. A great man. Mighty in words. Mighty in speech. If Moses speaks, nobody argues. Whenever Moses speaks, nobody else has sufficient wisdom to challenge whatever he says. How did Moses become like that? He was made by a small girl for whose purpose for her own not for God the devil is aware of what we are talking about the devil understands this principle of making the devil don't take the making process for granted for whoever he will use the devil will give time and make that person. Why is the church naive about making men? Why is it that our pastors are not interested in making men? Why is it that we don't have a commitment to training men that we become like Jesus and serve the kingdom of God? And after all that, that girl did a wonderful job. He trained Moses. Moses became full of Egyptian wisdom. Please follow me quickly. Let me show you the result of what we are talking about here. Exodus chapter 2. Can someone help us? Exodus chapter 2. Let's see the result of what Pharaoh's daughter did. So that you will believe what God is dealing with us that is all about here. Exodus chapter 2. Are we together? Now, I'm looking for verse 17. Maybe let me start from 16. Now, the priest of Midian had seven daughters. And they came and drew water and filled the troughs to water their flocks, their father's flocks. And the shepherds came and drove them away. But Moses stood up and help them and watered their flock. 18. Look at 18. And when they came to Ruel, their father, he said, How is it that you are come so soon today? And they said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the hands of the shepherds 
and also drew water enough for us and water and watered the flock. Uh, Mutambi wi Midiani yari afite abakobwa barindwi baraza badahirira intamaze zase buzuza ibibumbiro abashumba baraza barabiruka Mose arahaguruka arabatabara yuhira umukumbi wabo bagiye kwa se Rawel arababaza ati none uko mutebutse baramusubiza bati nuko umugabo w'umunye w'umunye Egiputa yadukijije abashumba kanda akatudahirira akatudahirira akatwuhirira umukumbi amen what do you see in that scripture niki wize muri ibi byanditswe muri ibi byanditswe dusomye ni niriye somo ukuye who are they calling an egyptian in that passage ninde barimo kwita umunye egiputa moses moses is moses an egyptian no ne se moses yari umunye egiputa how come that they say Moses an Egyptian No ne se no ne se kuchi bavuga ngo Moses ngo numunye Egiputa What made Moses an Egyptian Ni iki cyatumye Moses abo munye Egiputa The training ni no gutegurwa Somebody invested Hari umuntu wamushize n'imbaragaze in the training of Moses Amutoza ubwenge bw'abanye Egiputa I want you to see the making process in the kingdom of darkness. Ndashaka kugira ngo nkwereke gahunda uburyo mu bwami bw'umwijima Satana ajya tegura abantu. Those guys, they have never seen Moses in their life. Aba bakobwa bari batarabona Moses mu buzima bwa. That was the first day they met him. Nibwo bwa mbere bari babonye Moses. So you cannot say they know him somewhere. Ntabwo rero bavuga ko bari bafite amateka na CV. How come? Oh yeah. ja, how did Moses appear? Moses said, how did Moses behave? How did Moses look like in their eyes? And as they saw him, Bamumonye, and as he stood up, ahagaze, and displaced the shepherds, and watered their own flocks, aka, aga, akuhurira, inhamazabu, they concluded, basho, jabavu, the behavior of this man, the attitude of this man, the way he pushed she where the shepherds he is an egyptian the making gukorwa no guhindurwa did that girl pharaoh's daughter wo mukobwa afara did she achieve her aim yageze ku ntego ye did she achieve her result ese yageze ku ntego ye in the kingdom of darkness when you give them a hebrew boy niyo ifashe umuheburai they will make him an egyptian in the kingdom of darkness the church has not discovered that the leaders of the church are yet to discover that secret. That if God handed over to you as a pastor, an Egyptian boy, you should make him a Hebrew boy. That is what God is calling us to do. That is the ministry that God has brought us into. The people from the kingdom of darkness should be made by reason of training, by reason of preparation, by reason of equipping, by reason of nourishing, so that by outlook, by behavior, by attitude, you should look like Christ. This is where the church has failed. So we have men and women who are not made at all. They are talking about God. They are serving God. Why the devil is not taking anything for granted 
Satan is not leaving anybody aside in this matter. Everybody he come across, the children of believers, the Hebrews in our midst, he has converted them to Egypt. He has made them. This is dangerous for the church. It was expected. Every minister of the gospel is made by reason of preparation. If our brother spent seven years in order to practice medicine, eh? mm. and there are some of us sisters here, some of pastors here, who went for a Bible school of two years, only on weekends. And you got diploma in theology. And you are a pastor. How? How? Eh? How can you go to a theology school for two years? And you go to school only by weekend, Friday evening and Saturday. Then you have a degree. Then you are now a pastor. Then you are sitting over the people of God. And so they are not being made also. An unmade pastor cannot make people for God. When a preacher is not made, he has no capacity to make other people. It is when you are made, when you are equipped, when you are furnished, when you are nourished, when you are prepared, that you can prepare other people. How come that the church of God has become worldly? Unmade preachers on the pulpit. Where will this end? Somebody must stand up here. In our midst. said, Enough is enough. We must put an end to this matter. Several of our elders who grew up in ministry and became bishops. How did they arrive there? How did they become bishops? bishop <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When church had credibility, when you discover the call of God on your life, you will now go to a theological school. You will spend at least five, six, seven years gathering knowledge. When you finish and graduated from seminary school, they bring you. They bring you. You are not qualified to pastor a church. When you graduate from theological school, you are not yet qualified. Do you understand? What the leaders, our fathers, what they used to do, they will take you and put under a senior man of God. You will be under this senior man of God. You are not qualified to preach. You will be watching Baba. You will be looking at him as he is praying. You will be watching him. You will be carrying his bag. 
Anywhere he is going, you are the one. You are finished theological school. You are a graduate from seminary. You are not qualified to do it. You will follow Baba at least five years. And if Baba's report about you is a good report, you know what our leaders will do? They will withdraw you and give you a small church and somebody will be watching you somebody will be supervising you in that small church you will be there for years they are taking your report they are watching you when you begin to do well by character by attitudes you are not toiling with people's wives they will now begin to promote you they will give you a bigger church then you will be there another person is supervising you you are growing in rank before you become a bishop you will go and serve another bishop you will stay under a bishop for years you will learn that bishop after that they may consider you to become a bishop is that not the process? How come today somebody repented three years ago? You repented three years ago. We had And by the fourth year, you are a bishop. And small, small boys are carrying your bag. <laughs> How did it happen? The church neglected the making process. So we have bishops that are unmade. That is the trouble of the church. This is the calamity of the church. Unmade preachers. They are on the pulpit. They are the one talking. They are the one on the television. They have more television ministry. Unmade preachers. How did it happen? We missed it. We miss something. Brothers and sisters, God is saying, Let us go back to the Bible. Let's go back to the Bible. Let's go and check how it was done in the days of old. How were spiritual men made? How did they become great to serve God? They went through a process. Look at what that, that girl, that small girl did for Moses. Our whole Moses. They made him an Egyptian. Because somebody has a clear vision. The devil see better than the children of God. So we don't know what to do. In conclusion. Look at Acts 7 again. That's where we conclude. Look at what happened here. The Bible said. When he was full 40 years old, he came to his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. And as he went out to visit, he saw an Egyptian. Listen. He saw who? An Egyptian. Doing what? Harassing a Hebrew man. And Moses, Moses, who is trained by Egyptian to be Pasha, and tribalistic, 
by the training of Egypt. Moses became tribalistic. You cannot serve God when you are a tribalistic preacher. So Moses looked at them. He said, This one is an Egyptian. This one is my brother. He joined his brother. He killed Egyptian. They buried it. And Moses said, Don't talk. We will kill them one by one. Is that how to serve God? Is that how to serve God? If God is going to overthrow Egypt, is it by killing Egyptians one by one? Is that the strategy? The ministry of our made man. Who don't know the strategy of God in serving God? He wants to bring deliverance, but he don't know God. He don't understand God. He don't know the ways of God. So he started doing the work of God wrongly. Are there not pastors seated in our midst tonight? Who want to serve God? But they are doing it wrongly. They are doing the wrong thing. They don't know God. They have not learned God. They are not equipped by God. They are not yet made by God. So they don't understand God. They don't understand the ways of God. They don't understand the principles of God. All they know is to carry Bible and preach. Unmade ministers. He went home and celebrated victory. On due victory. <laughs> the following day, he was mobilized by what happened yesterday. And he jumped out. Said, Maybe I will see another Egyptian to kill today. So he started going out. This time, he <laughs> Do you see a problem now? A tribalistic man. There was no basis to be biased. Two Hebrew men are fighting. And then, he saw them. So he went there. When he listened to them, the one that was wrong, he said, why are you offending your brother? And the man looked at him. He said, who are you? Who made you a judge over us? In Israel, it is understood that every judge every priest every prophet every man that we stand at the altar must be made that is common knowledge when they saw him trying to mediate and they looked at him and say, this man, even the way you are looking, you are an Egyptian. You are an Egyptian. Who made you a judge over us? Watch. Then you that if a man is not made, he has no right to settle any issue. They knew it was clear that if a man is not made, he has no capacity, he doesn't have what it takes to resolve problems between two people. They all knew in Israel. Nobody becomes a leader among the people of God without being made. Even small, small children in Israel knew this. The church of God don't know this. 
Men of God today don't know it. They are looking for certificates. They are looking for titles. I saw one man of God. In his own titles alone are more than one line on a paper. Titles. Apostle, prophet, evangelist. Apostle, reverend, doctor, senior pastor. I said, ah, you alone. <laughs> Allow another brother to also have it. No, I said, Rashaka, come on, Apostle, we we prophet. We are a man of God. We are a man of God. What has made several of you ministers? Is certificate and title. Not the making hand of God. What has made several of you pastors here? Is the certificate you have. Character you don't have. Godly attitude you don't have. Money problem you have. Certificate you have. Women problem you have. Holiness you don't have. Who made you? Brother, who made you a leader? How did you become a pastor? Why are you carrying titles? No man of God that is correct standing before God. Ministered by reason of title. They were made. They were made. They were prepared. They were equipped. Who made you? Who made you a preacher? How did you become a pastor? And you cannot settle quarrels. You cannot handle the problem of people. But you call yourself a pastor. pastor. Moses could not handle the issue of his brothers. Do you know why? He was not made. Ministry. Without being made, we never achieve anything for God. You cannot. You can gather people, you can brainwash them, you can collect their money, you confuse people, and they don't get to heaven. Or made pastors. Listen. Listen. God wants to help us here. Listen. If I say jump up and shout hallelujah, you will be in heaven. I told you a lie. If you are in heaven, I told you a lie. Listen. Let's face the truth about ourselves. We are preachers here. Our members are not here. We need to talk true about ourselves. Let's face the truth about our lives. Listen. Do you know there are pastors here? Even if you don't win a soul in a whole month, you still collect salary. You still collect your salary at the end of the month. And you are not winning souls. Is it not happening? Is it not happening? Pastor, Pastor, there are several months that you don't win a soul. You don't help anybody spiritually. But your salary. Nobody must temper with it. <laughs> that is the attitude of an unmade pastor. We are going to pray. Before we pray. Look at what happened. The Bible said, as Moses was challenging them, the 
the man asked him who made you a woman? And the man went on to say something. After he has challenged Moses, he said, Do you want to kill me? As you killed an Egyptian yesterday. Hey. Listen. Listen. The ministry of an unmade preacher is to kill people. When you are not made, the ministry you can serve in, the best you can do is to kill. The man asking, who made you? We know because you are not made you have been killing people even yesterday you killed an Egyptian do you want to kill me? I know you are not yet made the ministry of our made man is the ministry of killing people Brothers and sisters, how long will you continue in the ministry of killing people? Say, you are not made. You cannot judge me. The only thing you can do to me is to kill me. So, do you want to kill me? You killed somebody yesterday. How many of our preachers have anointing to kill others? Physical death is going on among preachers. I've been to places. I know preachers that fellow pastors poison and they die. I want to become a bishop. So you poison the man ahead of me. No, no, so that he will die. No, no, I will take him. He physical death. It's happening among us. Great and anointed men of God. Only anointed to kill people. I ask you this afternoon. What is your ministry about? Is it about killing people? Are you going to kill others? Are you anointed to frustrate others? The church members under you. Are they getting life? Are they growing in life? Are you not killing them? Because you are not made. The ministry of an unmade pastor is the ministry of killing others. When Moses was not made, the best of his ministry was to kill. Is that where you stand today? We're going to take a few minutes of prayer. Where do you stand? Are you equipped? Are you adequately prepared to serve God? How do you come into ministry? Was it a certificate that gave you ministry? Or it was just a title? There's a process of making men. God will never send a man until he has made. He has made. Were you made? Were you made? Who made you? Who who made you? How did you become what you are? The ministry of an unmade preacher. The ministry of killing people. 
this afternoon we we need to stand before the lord we need to open our hearts before god again. there must be a visitation upon this land one clear word god has given us over years the land of Rwanda has been a land of mourning. But there shall be a rejoicing. That God is turning your mourning into a rejoicing. And he cannot start any other place. He will start with his servants. Those whom he has called. But you must be made for revival to take place. First in your life, in your family, and then in the congregation, it begins with you. Will you rise up on your feet? Will you rise up on your feet this We are going to pray. We are going to call on God. Are you involved in the ministry of an unmade man? Are you part of that kind of ministry? Are you laboring but you are not made? Are you committed to the things of God so to say? But you are not made. Your character is strange. The secret life you live is strange. Because you are not made. You like to lift your voice before the Lord. You like to say something to God. You like to pray. Bring yourself to the Lord. You are a stakeholder in the kingdom of God. Your leadership role is very critical. God will not leave you alone like this. If you are not made, your ministry will bring death. I will urge you to pray. I want our brother Josiah, please come and give us a bit. As we are going to pray again. A few minutes of prayer before we go for lunch. But it is this important this afternoon that you pray for yourself as a pastor, as a minister of the gospel. Would you like to say something about your personal preparation? Let's, let's go to God.